Now it's time for Made in the Northwest. We're down here in Silverton, Oregon at the Frank Lloyd Wright's designed Gordon House. Come take a look. This place is amazing. This is Frank Lloyd Wright's version of affordable housing, right, that he created late in his career. Yes, he designed Usonian homes, uh, and Usonian was his version, or vision, I guess is appropriate word, for uh, an architecture that was for the common man, that was uh, affordable housing. Uh, believe it or not, uh, when he started this in the 30s, an affordable house was $5,000. Hard to believe. He uh, wanted these to be affordable homes. Uh, and so uh, one of the things he did was uh, what we now call, I guess, the open floor plan of, you know, living dining area altogether. As you look around the house, you say it looks very mid-century modern, very 60s. Mm -hmm. Uh, and indeed it does, but realize the bones of this house really were designed in 1938. So Wright was very far ahead of his time in terms of uh, spatial uh, arrangements. Should we take a look around this place? Because yeah. there are so many cool little places in here that yeah. I want to see because Let's this it. house tells such a great story. Let's head into that kitchen. Wright didn't call them kitchens. Really? He called them workspaces. Wow. Yeah, so here we are in the workspace. That's what Wright called them. Uh, and actually, this room, I think, kind of showcases something interesting. Wright was really inter interested in adopting new technology. So we see that throughout this room. So for example, he didn't want a typical range. He wanted something built in, something custom. The latest and greatest in Gen Air cooktops from 1956. <laughs> that is amazing to see. Yeah, and uh, the oven is also Gen Air, has all the dials you could ever hope for. Yeah. The refrigerator is a uh, Revco. Uh, it was the Cadillac of refrigerators at that time. And uh, one of the first to have the veneered front, so it reads as a, uh, you know, separate cabinet, doesn't read as an appliance. Freezer on the bottom, that was totally new. Compressor on the top, that was totally new. Another new uh, first, the single lever faucet. That was totally new, and right, incorporate that here as well. This is so far ahead of its time for something like this because yeah. it took 20, 30, 40, even 50 years for this to come out into the regular household. Exactly. And then we have to address yes. this ceiling in here. <laughs> yeah. This is absolutely stunning. And it's amazing. There are no windows in this room, but this skylight brings so much light into it. And you have really good light on your work surfaces. Mm -hmm. And the fluorescent lighting under the cabinets, that was totally new. What I like too is how he brought this detail down here to make this feel like you're in intimate space. Yes. While still having this massive ceiling in here. Exactly. All right, we got the office. All right, yes, this was Mr. Gordon's office. Mr. Gordon's man cave, if you will. Uh, he was still farming at the time, and so uh, this was his office where he ran his farm operations. Wright provided this desk where he could meet with his uh, farm help. Uh, three people could actually sit around the desk and conference, and provided these bookshelves where he could store all his farm records. I love the ceiling height in here, again, it's that Frank Lloyd Wright feeling of how he brings things in to make it feel intimate and then of course goes into the grander spaces and, and blows everybody's socks off. So here we are at the entrance and uh, what we talk about here is a technique that Wright employed which he called compression and expansion. And so typically all his Usonian homes you come into this tightly controlled area low ceiling, kind of tight walls, kind of claustrophobic almost yeah. in a way. But then when you walk out into this grand space, it just explodes into volume. And you're that much more impressed because you've come from this tightly controlled area. I've noticed that this in these Usonian type homes that there's a little more storage compared to some of his other homes that he's built. That's true. And uh, he didn't believe in attics. He didn't believe in basements. He didn't believe in garages. Mm -hmm. He said they all just collected stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would totally agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> so what he tried to do is incorporate as much storage as he could throughout the house. 
Come on upstairs. You're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, here's a good example of a uh, hallway doing double duty. Mm -hmm. uh, we have storage uh, for uh, everything. Uh, we have place to display art. Mrs. Gordon collected art, so lots of space for her to display her artwork. Uh, and you'll notice the ceiling again is kind of low. He didn't want you spending a lot of time in the hallway. You should be down in that great room he <laughs> created for you and your family. And I love the fretwork and design on these windows. Yeah. I mean, that is so amazing to me as a, as a designer in my background. Yeah. You don't see that. And so this is the gateway now to the bedrooms, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we take a look at one of those? Sure. Let's head down this direction and we'll look at the uh, what would have been the son's bedroom. Okay, I would have loved to have had this bedroom. Yeah, if I lived here, this would have been my bedroom. <laughs> uh, typical right, lots of built-ins, built-in desk, built-in uh, headboard and bookshelves. Uh, he wanted you to feel like you were part of where you were living. I noticed how in here, again, he did the flush light fixtures, just really keeping things very simple, but uh, very functional as well. Yeah, and these, again, were sort of the latest and greatest in light fixtures. So this is the master bedroom? I mean, it's beautiful. Yes, well, uh, and by today's standards, it seems small, but, yeah. uh, you know, Wright felt that you should be up there in that great room with your family. Didn't want you to spend a lot of time in your bedroom. It was for sleeping and changing clothes. That was it. Hence the lowered ceiling. You know, you feel a little uncomfortable. You shouldn't be sticking around in here. You should be out there. You see, we have this wonderful terrace here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Wright had an act for blurring inside and outside. So you see the floor just continues right to, to the outside here. You'll notice the house reads very horizontal. Uh, Wright was very enamored with the horizontal line. It was the line of the horizon. It was very peaceful, very calming, made his architecture fit into the landscape. So you'll notice the horizontal band around the entire house uh, with the uh, uh, concrete block, the uh, voids between each block have been uh, filled. Yeah. Uh, so it reads as a very horizontal structure. I really want to thank you guys for being the caretaker of this masterpiece because this is not something you get to see here in the Pacific Northwest and it's just a beautiful piece of art. Well, thank you. And we thoroughly enjoy having people come to see the home, learn more about it. This is something you got to come down and take a look for yourself. There's nothing like it in the Pacific Northwest.